forklifts, lift trucks, powered industrial trucks. Used to be you'd see them only in factories and warehouses. Now, with over a million in operation, they're everywhere. At the grocery store, the home improvement center, the sawmill, and even where you work. Look at them working and you'll see many different forklifts doing many different jobs. The one you see most often is the sit-down rider, but there are lots of others, like the stand-up end control rider, the stand-up high reach truck, the narrow aisle reach truck. You'll also see side loaders, straddle trucks and turret trucks, trans stackers and yard trucks, tow trucks, walkie riders, and trucks built for special purposes, like handling logs or shipping containers and for working on rough ground. But whatever they look like, these machines that save us so much work are dangerous weapons in the hands of an untrained, unskilled, or careless operator. Each year in the United States, about 20,000 people are seriously injured in forklift incidents. Of the nearly 100 who were killed, almost one-fourth were caught in overturns, and 40% were struck or crushed by a forklift, all incidents that a trained operator can prevent. In recent years, state and federal safety officials have banned anyone under 18 from operating a forklift in non-farm operations, precisely because these young operators have far more accidents and injuries. In addition, state and federal regulations now require all operators, regardless of age or experience, to be trained and certified before operating a forklift. Refresher training must be conducted every three years, after any accident or near miss, if you're observed operating in an unsafe manner and any time conditions or equipment change. Yet even with all these training requirements, in the most recent year, forklifts ranked fifth in the number of OSHA citations and eighth in fines. This program is designed to be part of your powered industrial truck training. It will help you identify basic forklift structure and design, understand the factors that affect forklift balance and maneuverability, and perform a pre-shift inspection. A powered industrial truck, or PIT, is defined as a mobile, power-driven vehicle used to carry, push, pull, lift, stack, or tier material. PITs come in a variety of sizes and designs and may operate on battery power, propane, gasoline, diesel fuel, and even compressed natural gas. Each type is designed to do a specific kind of work in the set situation, and each has the specialized controls, attachments, tires, and lifting capacity to perform its assigned job. Because each truck, task, and work area is different, there are many different operating and safety requirements. The high-reach fork truck operates very differently from the stand-up end control rider. Even the controls can be different. While most forklifts steer with a steering wheel, some use a joystick. And on some stand-up reach trucks, you have to lift your foot up to operate the brake. To further complicate matters, when you add attachments, it changes how the truck steers and balances, and reduces the weight the truck can lift. That's why you must be trained and certified for each type of truck you operate, and for each type of work and condition. During your hands-on training, you'll learn about the specifics for the truck you'll be operating. But some issues affect every forklift in every workplace. The operator's manual is a critical information source for the certified operator. It explains the design of the truck, the controls, and the attachments. It's filled with charts and explanations that tell how the truck operates in different situations and with various loads and attachments. The professional operator reads it, keeps it safe, and consults it often. The data plate, nameplate, and any markings added for attachments or modifications must be affixed to the forklift. The data plate tells the capacity of the truck in terms of weight and load center at a specified load height. These must be kept in place and readable at all times by all operators.
As you'll see later, the size and shape of the load, where it is placed on the forks, and even the length of the forks or use of attachments change the capacity of the truck. That's why the operator is always the final judge of whether a particular load is within the truck's capacity and safe to lift. Regardless of the type of lift truck, all modifications and attachments must be approved in writing by the manufacturer. Keep in mind that welding a winch or adding a platform to a forklift is adding an attachment. The same goes for fork extensions. Never change your truck without the manufacturer's written approval. It's not only illegal, it also alters how the forklift balances and could cost you your life. You must use all available operator restraints. This means wear your seat belt or harness every day, every time, even if you're traveling only a short distance. The reason? Being thrown from or crushed by the truck is the leading cause of operator injuries and deaths. When you climb onto a forklift, what you see depends on the truck's manufacturer, its design and intended use, and its rating. Some have a seat for the operator, while on others, the operator stands. On some trucks, the operator and the controls elevate to the work. On others, only the equipment elevates. Some can be controlled from multiple locations. Regardless of the design, most powered industrial trucks have a wheel, a crank or an arm for steering, and a key or toggle switch for starting. You'll also find a service brake and a parking brake. Some trucks also have Myco brakes, a type of lever locking brake application device. Myco locks are always used in addition to the mechanical parking brake, never instead of it or alone. On a forklift, you control the movement with an accelerator pedal or lever. On some trucks, the accelerator is combined with a direction selector, sort of like a joystick on a video game. You'll also find load control levers. These manipulate, lift, and tilt the forks and attachments. Some models also have controls for load rotation, side shifting, and even extended reaching while elevated. Because you must warn pedestrians and traffic when a forklift is nearby, every truck has a horn or some other means of warning, and some have a backup alarm. Also, lights ranging from headlights to a warning strobe. Electric trucks, those powered by batteries, typically have an hour meter and a battery discharge indicator. These tell hours of operation and battery condition. Internal combustion trucks, whether powered by propane, diesel, or gasoline, usually have an hour meter, an ammeter or indicator light, a fuel gauge, an engine temperature indicator, and an engine oil pressure indicator. You must learn every control and instrument on the type of truck you will be operating, so you'll be ready for your hands-on practice. Most first-time forklift operators think that if they can drive a car, they can operate a forklift. Wrong. Operating a forklift is nothing like driving a car. Forklifts steer from the rear. On turns, the rear end swings in a circle around the drive wheels, which are in front. Because the drive wheels support most of the load, the truck is less stable when turning than when moving in a straight line. You also have less steering control when turning, especially when loaded. A forklift can spill its load or topple over if you stop, turn, or swerve quickly. And while forklifts travel equally well in forward and reverse, they have major blind spots that only get worse when the load is added. No, forklifts are not like cars. They are unstable, unbalanced, heavily loaded machines that require a trained, focused mind and a steady hand. Learning about the physics of a forklift is central to a well-trained and safe operator. Many people don't realize that an unloaded forklift is deliberately unbalanced. The load adds the front-to-back balance that lets the forklift do its work. To understand forklift stability, you have to understand a few important terms. The first is fulcrum. This is the pivot point on which two weights balance. A balanced teeter-totter resting on a support is balanced on its pivot point or fulcrum. To function, a forklift must balance load weight in front and truck weight in the rear on its fulcrum, the front wheels. The second important term is center of gravity. Try to visualize it as the single point around which an object is balanced in all directions. The center of gravity of a four-foot square stack of bricks would be exactly in the middle of the stack. An unloaded, unmoving lift truck has a fixed center of gravity. 
but this point changes when the truck starts to work. The center of gravity moves forward and back as the mast is tilted forward and back. It moves up and down as the mast moves up and down. The truck's center of gravity changes again when a load is added. The truck plus the load now have what is called a combined center of gravity. Picture it as a single point of maximum downward force that moves forward and back, up and down as the truck operates. The last term to remember is stability triangle. Starting at each end of the front drive axle, draw a line to the middle of the steering axle. This triangle, with the front drive axle as the base, is called the stability triangle. If the combined center of gravity, that single point of greatest downward force, stays within the stability triangle, the forklift stays stable. But if the combined center of gravity moves outside the stability triangle, the forklift becomes unstable and tips over. Let's look at some situations that can occur when the combined center of gravity moves outside the stability triangle. If it moves forward of the drive axle, the truck tends to tip forward. This is called a longitudinal tip over. Some actions that can cause this are too much forward tilt, raising the mass too high, too heavy a load, shifting the load too far forward, driving downhill, and quick stops. If the combined center of gravity moves outside of the stability triangle in any other direction, the truck tends to turn on its side, called a lateral tip over. Some things that can cause a lateral tip over are the load shifting to the side, turning, speeding, unequal tire pressure, uneven floors or uneven terrain, off-center loads, and raising the mast too high with a rear tilt. One last concept that every operator must understand is called load center. The distance from the front of the forks or from the front of the load face of an attachment to the middle of the load is called the load center. Most trucks have 48-inch forks and are rated at a load center of 24 inches. When you carry the load forward of the load center, you reduce the capacity of the truck, generally by about 165 pounds for each inch away from the load center. Attachments, such as fork extensions, also change the load center. Check the data plate for information on capacity. You'll find it listed in terms of weight and load center at a specified lift height. Knowing this information is critical to keeping your fork truck balanced. Part of your job as a professional operator is to be sure your forklift is safe and functional before you use it. Depending on where you work, this may be called a pre-use inspection, a daily inspection, or a pre-shift inspection. In most cases, you will be given a checklist by your employer that shows the items and systems you must examine before putting the vehicle into service. Many employers use a version of two sample inspection checklists published by OSHA. One checklist was developed in cooperation with the Industrial Truck Association and the other with the United Auto Workers Ford National Joint Committee on Health and Safety. Most inspection checklists call for you to first perform an equipment inspection with the forklift off. Then you start the equipment, check gauges and lights, and put it through its paces to make sure everything works properly. Once you get used to your equipment and the inspection process, you'll be surprised at how fast these inspections can be done. When you inspect your forklift, you'll go over all of its parts to check for damage. Although every forklift is different, most share many basic elements that you'll need to examine. Let's look at some of these. The mast is an upright section with a set of tracks that hold ball-bearing rollers and chains or cables. The forks are mounted to the carriage, which moves them up and down along the mast. The mast tilts forward and backward and may shift from side to side. Inspect the mast for broken or cracked welds, dents, or worn or missing stops. Look for wear or damage or kinks on the roller tracks and lift chains. Check for rust and any sign that they need lubrication. Next, inspect the hydraulic system, which lifts and tilts the forks. First, check the level of the hydraulic fluid. Be sure hoses are not leaking or cracked and that fittings are secure. Then, inspect the lift and tilt cylinders for damage or leaks. Last, examine the cylinder mounting hardware to make sure everything is tight. On almost every powered industrial truck, you'll find some type of forks. They are designed to slide under the load, lift and hold it in transit, and place it in the new location. 
Forks tilt forward or backward to keep the load from falling and can be moved apart or closer together to lift loads of varying widths. Inspect the forks for cracks, wear or damage along the blade and at the heels. Make sure they are not bent and that they match and are equally spaced. Next, you need to check the overhead guard and the backrest for broken welds, dents, missing bolts or other damage. The backrest is designed to prevent the load or pieces of it from falling onto the operator when the forks are tilted back. Some large lift trucks, like rough terrain telescoping models, have an ROPS or a rollover protective structure. But most lift trucks have an overhead guard or FOPS, the falling object protective structure. The FOPS is designed to prevent small objects, unbanded loads, and bagged materials from falling onto the operator from above. The overhead guard is not strong enough to protect you in a rollover or if a heavy load falls onto the truck. Objects smaller than six inches, say green tomatoes, bricks, or a loose two by four, can get through both the overhead guard and the backrest. Other key items in the inspection are the tires and rims. Check for excessive wear, splits, and large cuts. Make sure all wheel nuts are in place and tight. Check that the rubber isn't separated from the rim. If your forklift has pneumatic tires, check the air pressure and adjust it for the surface you'll be on. You'll also need to check the other fluid levels, including oil and coolant. Inspect the area around and under the forklift to see if fluids have leaked while it was parked. A major part of every forklift inspection involves the power plant, either the battery system or a fuel system that uses diesel, gasoline, or propane. If your forklift is battery powered, you may be responsible for various degrees of battery care, ranging from inspection before use to changing and charging. In all cases, working around batteries is hazardous, so you must take steps to protect yourself before you begin. Put on all required personal protective equipment. In most cases, you'll need to wear acid-resistant eye, face, and hand protection. You also may need an apron or other protective clothing and special shoes. Know the location of the nearest eye wash station, emergency shower, or faucet. They should be very close to the battery changing or charging area. If you get acid on you, rinse with water for at least 15 minutes. If you splash acid in your eyes, hold your eyelids open while you rinse and notify your supervisor immediately. When you work on batteries, you also need to know where the nearest fire extinguisher is located. Learn how to use it properly and know the nearest exit in case you have to evacuate quickly. Once you're ready to deal with emergencies, it's time to check out the battery system. Look everything over for corrosion, cracks, or leakage. Make sure every battery cell is sealed, that the cables are not missing insulation, and that the terminal post connections are tight. Most facilities provide a baking soda solution or special cleanser to neutralize spills and remove corrosion. Be sure to have a supply nearby. Never smoke or allow anyone nearby to smoke or do hot work in the battery area. Hydrogen gas that escapes through the vent holes is extremely flammable. When you're finished using the forklift or at the end of your shift, you'll need to make sure the forklift is ready for the next operator. In some facilities, you will take the battery to a charging area and exchange it for a fully charged battery. If you charge the battery yourself, park in the charging area. Turn off the truck, set the handbrake, and chalk the wheels if the charging area isn't level. Plug the battery connector into the charger. Turn on the charger and make sure the indicator light shows that it is operating properly. When the battery is charged, turn off the charger, disconnect the cables, and plug the battery into the forklift. Your battery-powered forklift is now ready for use. If your forklift is powered by LPG, propane, gasoline, or diesel, your power plant inspection is different. Check the fuel tank for cracks, broken welds, rust, or any other damage. Make sure valves and nozzles are secure and that there are no leaks. Check the oil, transmission fluid, and coolant levels. On LPG trucks, be sure the tank guard bracket is properly positioned and locked down. Examine the hose to see if it is damaged, frayed, pinched, kinked, or bound up. Be sure the connector is threaded squarely and is tight. 
If you smell the odor of propane, turn off the tank valve and report the problem immediately. Just as with a battery-powered truck, smoking, flames, and hot work are never allowed in the fueling area or around propane tanks. The final part of your pre-use inspection involves testing all systems with a forklift running. Start the forklift and check all gauges, indicators, monitors, and warning lights. If any aren't working, turn off the forklift and report the problem so it can be fixed. Never try to do it yourself. Only authorized personnel are allowed to repair forklifts. If everything looks okay, you're ready to put the forklift through its normal maneuvers. Make sure you're in a safe location, away from people, traffic, and overhead obstructions. Lift the carriage to its maximum height. Lower the carriage until it just clears the floor. Tilt the forks all the way forward and bring them back. Check the steering. If it's rough or anything sounds noisy or hesitates, get it checked. Try the lights, horn, and any other warning devices. Travel forward and stop. Then travel in reverse and stop. The brake should feel smooth and operate properly. Finally, check the emergency brake and put all controls back in neutral. If everything seems fine, you're ready for work. If not, if you find a problem or suspect one, stop and report it so it can be fixed. There's no way around it. Trucks must be removed from use when they are considered unsafe. OSHA and your employer provide guidelines on what this means. But some common unsafe conditions include tire or brake problems, fluid leaks, play in the steering, a horn that doesn't work, a missing or illegible data plate, and broken or damaged gauges or structural parts. Never operate a damaged vehicle. It's dangerous for you, for your coworkers, and can get you and your facility into a lot of trouble. In the last few minutes, we've explored some of the basic information you need to know to be a certified forklift operator. You've learned about forklift structure and design, the factors that affect forklift balance and maneuverability, and the items involved in performing a pre-shift inspection. As you sharpen your skills on your equipment, this information and your professional good judgment can help you become a certified forklift operator.